Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Cornell Hunter, sitting along with the czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2009 Baltimore Ravens. And we all know that they lost their highly touted defensive coordinator, Rex Ryan, and there's some changes in the coaching staff, but how do you think they're going to hold up in the 2009 season? I think the Ravens are sitting in the catbird seat. I think they're sitting pretty well. They're going to do things like they've always done. Consistency is their motto, and they don't break that for anyone. Uh, and starting with the offense, you know, the offense was for a long time the problem area, the question mark for that team. Kept them out a lot of playoff games from the Super Bowl, uh, probably quite possibly. But they, they have some consistency with uh, John Harbaugh coming back. As, a, as the head coach, he's year two in the system, and Flacco is going to do okay. He's going to do real well. It's his second year in the system. Strong running game with Willis McGahee, LaRon McClain. They're going to bring in uh, Ray Rice more this this year in the offense. You know, bring him along slowly. So he's he's going to the, the three headed running attack is going to be fine. Uh, then you look at that offensive line, huge, huge. Huge. It's a lot of big guys on that offensive That's line. That's why they like to run the ball the way they do. You 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 pound beef with beef. You know, it's, I call it the double quarter pounder with these guys. You have Ben Grubbs, big guard. You have Jared Gaither, big mammoth tackle, 6'9", 340 pounds, huge guy. They drafted Michael Orr out of Ole Miss, the top of the highly touted tackle coming out the, uh, coming out of college this year. So that O line is is phenomenal, and so they're going to protect. They got Willie Anderson as a backup, veteran backup. So that offensive line is going to stand up tall to that running game, to that pass rush in that division and help Flacco find time down the field. Now you mentioned the uh, standout rookie from last year, Joe mm -hmm. Flacco. What what type of targets? I mean, we know that they have some reliable guys, you know, Mark Clayton or whatnot, but have they upgraded their receiver, receiver position? Or do you think the staff in Baltimore is content with the receivers they have? I think they're content because they haven't really upgraded. I mean, you still have Demetrius Williams, you have Mark Clayton, you have the veteran and uh, Mason, Derek Mason. Um, so those three, and they bring in L.J. Smith as a tight end So because they run a lot of two tight end sets, mm -hmm. and he's going to be the off tight end. Um, so Todd Heap is still the main guy. If Todd Heap can shake his injury bug, he, he's still a productive player, so I like Todd Heap. So the, the receiving core is solid. All you need is a couple of guys to make a, one or two more plays a game per game to increase production. But I think they're going to let Flacco throw more a little bit this year. And so that's going to be a full, that way the play action works because uh, they already have a dynamite running game. So if they get more production from Clayton and Williams, they'll be fine. And one thing I forgot to mention about that offensive line, the biggest acquisition is Matt Burke, center from Minnesota, smart guy, Ivy League guy. He's going to help command that offensive line, keep everybody in order. He's a true leader in the locker room. Okay, well, we spoke about the offense. Anybody with a dime of football knowledge knows that in Baltimore, it all starts with the defense. So going into the 2009 season, Ray Lewis has a new contract, so he's financially satisfied. What do you see? Do you see continued domination from their Ravens defense? The rich get richer in Baltimore because they what they what they've done in the draft is address the defensive side of the ball because they lost a lot of guys on defense. The biggest one they lost Bart Scott. They drafted Paul Kruger from Utah, the big D line, Very D lineman, outside linebacker. I love that kid. That kid had a field day in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, they drafted Ladarius Webb from Nickel State, the cornerback, to get some youth in that position because they lose Chris McAllister. And Samar Rowe is now a backup in that in that secondary. And they also draft Jason Phillips from TCU. Was uh, it should be noticed that TCU has one of the top defenses the past five years in college football. So any defensive player from TCU is awesome. But you do mention the defensive line. Uh, you have Kelly Gregg. Mm -hmm. Barry, he's undersized for, for a 3 4 defensive nose tackle, but he does the job. He commands the double team. He's one of the most underrated players in the very state. Very active. He's very player. active. He's yeah. always in the mix. You look at uh, on Planet of Five, I think you have the big, another light dancer and a big agile guy from Hawaii. Uh, Haloti Nada. Yeah, it's a guy that you could drop him back in coverage. He catches interceptions. He blocks. Impossible to tackle. Impossible to tackle. He blocks field goals, extra points. So he's a hell of a player. I love, I love Haloti Nada. Then you have Trevor Price on the other end. You know, Sage veteran holding it down on the uh, strong side. So and I like, I like the defensive line. That's why the linebackers with Ray Lewis, you know, it, Terrell, be, Terrell Suggs. Suggs coming off the end is ridiculous. You know, that's why those guys and Tavares Gooden is going to have to come in and play like Bart Scott played for these guys. And hopefully he's from the U, so, you know, Ray Lewis took a liking to him to teach him, coach him along. So hopefully he can come in and play just as good as Bart Scott. And my biggest question going into this season, 
do you think quarterbacks are still going to throw at A. Reed? I'm still trying to figure out why they even test that guy. Do you know what insanity is? <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Quarterbacks always try to find a reason to pick apart that secondary, but they can't. Do not throw to Ed Reed. That's one of the most certain things in football. Do not throw back there when number 20 is back there lined up. And don't think about throwing underneath to uh, within the flats because Dewan Landry is a big hitter. Yes. You know, he, so he'll he'll knock your he'll knock your face off. So I like Dewan Landry. I love his game. I love what he brings to the secondary. So. Now you look at the cornerbacks, the Fabian Washington, speedy guy, 428, yes. active cornerback. I love his game, and he can get his hands on a couple balls as well, too. So you look at Fabian Washington, they bring in Dominique Foxworth mm -hmm. from, from Atlanta, uh, from Atlanta to, uh, to come in, a uh, new guy. So he's going to compete with uh, Samaru, who's going to be more of a backup this year. So the secondary is fine. As long as you got a pass rush, that secondary is going to be fine back there in Baltimore. And what about the uh, special teams in Baltimore? I mean, we all know about the kicking game. Kicking game is, is okay. Uh, the big thing I want to speak about the special teams is that they have Chris Carr. Uh, he was phenomenal in Oakland. Ran back a lot of kicks, kept those guys in a lot of games. So he's their kick off returner. He's going to double as their punt return as well. Okay, and uh, with that said, where do you see the uh, Baltimore Ravens finishing up in that division? You know they have to battle with the Pittsburgh Steelers year in and year out. Where do you see them finishing up? It's a two-man race. Uh, it's out of the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers have a little bit more offense, which is going to uh, help them out in, the, in a lot of games. Uh, but it's going to be a defense struggle. It's going to be, and you're splitting hairs, it's going to be, a, I, I say, a tie at the top of the division, but I'm going to have to say Pittsburgh. So I see the Ravens finishing number two in that division. But don't sleep. If they let Flacco throw a little bit more this season, the Ravens have a chance to surprise and take that vision from Pittsburgh. Well, there you have it. The Zarda Playbook thinks that Flacco will be a key to the continued success for the Ravens. That's the 2009 Baltimore Ravens team preview. I'm Cornell Hunter. That's Emory Hunt. I want you to visit www.footballgameplan.com slash NFL for more video analysis of your favorite team.